Welcome back to Gun and Shot TV. This is Chris, and here we'll be talking about the Savage Mark II F. Um, this is a bolt action, 22 long rifle, pretty much a, a starter gun or kind of like a boy's rifle. I mean, you could use it for more, but uh, it's a really, really bargain basement type of gun. Um, but that said, it does have a very low price point for a bolt action. Uh, bolt action 22s tend to be very expensive in today's market. I've got a couple different bolt action 22s. For example, I have this Marlin 81, which is a bolt action 22 long rifle. This is a little bit better build quality, but you have to realize this was probably about the same price point, but back in the, I believe, 40s or 50s for this one. I'm not sure. I know I looked it up when I made the video about it. Um, I also have a Ruger 77 22, which is a bolt action. Uh, it's very similar to the 77 Hawkeyes uh, in that it's got a fancy bolt and stuff, but it also takes 10 22 magazines. Uh, more, probably more closer in price range and features is Ruger makes the American Rimfire, which is similar to the Savage. Um, like I said, these, like this one is nice quality. The 77 22 is nice quality. I think the American Rimfire is a little bit nicer than Savage, but I think it's also closer to $300, whereas the Savage is about $200, $220. So as I, as I mentioned, I have a few different Bolt Action 22s, and I really wasn't looking for a Savage Mark II, but uh, Palmetto State Armory had them for a Black Friday deal. They had these for $150, which is a pretty good sale price. Um, I think they're usually around $200, $220. Uh, I've seen them at Walmart for $150, but I don't know if that was a clearance price or normal price. But anyways, PSA had them for $150 with a $50 mail-in rebate. I haven't gotten the rebate yet, but when I do, I'll pay $99 for a brand new bolt action. Um, it does have an AccuTrigger, which means you can adjust the trigger. But if you're playing with one in a gun shop and, and they let you dry fire it with a cap or something, you can't actually adjust it any lighter than it comes from the factory. You can make it heavier, which doesn't help most people. So that's kind of a kind of a dumb thing that they have the accu trigger. In the in the box, you get pretty much just a manual, a chamber flag, and this little Allen head screw thing that is for your accu trigger. Um, but like I said, it only lets you turn it up. It doesn't let you really turn it down any further than factory. Not the most important feature to advertise. It's got a 10 round detachable box magazine. I'm not a huge fan of it. It's kind of sharp and sticks out. I'm used to either tube mags or the flush fit uh, 7722 mag system. So it, it's kind of annoying, but that's, you know, that's, that's a minor thing if you can get the rifle pretty cheap. I will say, you know, look for used options, but anymore, a lot of the used ones are going for what these sell for new unless you find a really, really cheap gun shop. So if that's the case and you want new, there's absolutely nothing wrong with this rifle. It does function great. Um, I'm going to take it down to the range and shoot some exciting targets that I picked up on clearance, and uh, we'll see how it shoots. As far as operation goes, there's not that much to this gun. It's a bolt action. You just have your bolt. You've got a safety back here. It was a little stiff when I first started shooting it. It's, it's loosened up quite a bit. And then it has a safety built into the trigger. Um, it's pretty pretty standard on Savages to have this safety blade on the trigger. Um, to load it, you're just going to jam your magazine in. There's a spring clip that holds it. Cock the bolt. That's really all there is to it. And you're just going to shoot. And there's our 10 rounds.
So as you can see here in Illinois, it's unseasonably warm, but uh, it is January, so it was my favorite time of year at Walmart, the Christmas clearance season, when I get some interesting targets for pretty much nothing. I think I paid like a dime a box for candy canes, and of course they're sugar, so they're biodegradable. They were free, essentially, 10 cents for a box, and uh, if an animal eats them, it's not going to hurt anything. So these are the best kind of targets, and you really don't have to clean them up once they get wet, they'll all kind of just melt if they don't get eaten. So we'll see if I can hit some of these. I don't know, they're, they're pretty small at uh, the distance I'm gonna be shooting, but we'll see if I hit them. So it took me a second magazine to figure out I need to actually shoot a little bit to the right. The sights appear to be a tiny bit off. That or my technique is slightly off for this gun. Either way, shot a little bit to the right and suddenly I'm hitting all of them, which is awesome. So one other neat thing you can find after Christmas if you go to Walmart or some of your bigger department stores is spray snow for decorating windows and stuff like that. Uh, if you wait long enough, rather than $1.50, I think I paid, it was I think 20 or 25 cents a can for this. So I got like a case for, I think it was like 10 bucks, whatever it was. But uh, it's pretty neat, it blows up. Uh, it's not like you're wasting food or anything like that. So. Those of you that don't like doing that, go now and buy cases and cases and you'll have it for all year. And uh, it does make a nice boom uh, as far as a big plume of snow will blow out and you'll know you hit it even from a decent distance. So I'm going to put these down the range and we'll try shooting them. So here's a shot of one of our cans that got hit by the 22. You can see it blew up pretty neat. I think next time I might put them in front of my uh, 
torsos, so I paint my torsos white with the snow. So I hope you like that summary of the uh, Savage Mark II here. And like I said, it is a Mark II F. Uh, I, you know, like I said, I wasn't not looking for one, but I wasn't, I didn't really need one. But I was really impressed with the uh, Savage Trophy Hunter that I picked up, the Model 11 that I made a review of. And so I said, you know what, screw it, I'll give this a shot. And like I said, it's not the most refined gun. It's pretty basic. I don't know how, how well the finish would hold up with a lot of use. But... For the price I paid for it, I definitely have no complaints, and it, it would be a great gun. Uh, it's got some tap spots where you could put a scope mount on if you wanted to scope it, but I really like irons, especially on you know a Beater 22 rifle like this. I think the irons are handy, and they're less likely to lose adjustment compared to a cheap scope, unless you want to put a really nice scope on, but I don't know that this is necessarily the gun that most people put a nice scope on anyways. But for Gun and Shot TV, this is Chris. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.